Good afternoon to all. Today we are going to discuss the next important entity in uh, retina vitreous practices, vitreous hemorrhage. So, as the name indicates, vitreous hemorrhage is the extravasation or leakage of blood into the area and around of the vitreous humor of the eye. So, vitreous cavity, as we know, is the space between the retina and the lens. The area which is known as the posterior chamber, it is filled with a jelly-like substance which is known as vitreous. So, any bleeding in that cavity is known as vitreous hemorrhage. Anatomically, it can be divided into two forms. One is sub-vitreal or sub hemorrhage. Another is intragel hemorrhage. Intragel means when the blood is inside the main vitreous or sub or sub hemorrhage is when the hemorrhage is not into the vitreous gel proper. So, as the slide shows that it can be a non-dispersed hemorrhage, that means the hemorrhage is localized to a uh, certain portion of the posterior pole or the vitreous. So, this is a picture showing that there is a view that there is a localized uh, area where blood is there. So, this <coughs> can be usually the, this type of picture is when a small vessel or some pathology is localized at a small place. Second is the subvitreal or subhyloid hemorrhage. So it is the collection of the blood in the subhyloid species. It has got some characteristics. Usually in the sitting position, it is like a boat-like hemorrhage. When the if you see the fundus of the patient with direct or indirect whatever, so you will see a hemorrhage which is boat-like. Why? Because the because of the dependency of the liquid it settles down in the form of a boat or if but this boat is only seen when the patient is sitting if the patient is lying down positions you may not find this type of boat because the hemorrhage is spread out on the posterior pole when whenever you lie down the most dependent part of the eye is the macula so if such type of hemorrhage is there which is in the sitting position when the patient lies down the hemorrhage comes on the macula. So, patient sometimes gives typical history ki my vision is good when I am sitting. But when I am lying down, my vision goes down. Or in the morning, initially my vision is bad, but after some time, when I move out or something, my vision gradually gets cleared up. So, it is boat shape hemorrhage. And it is uh, there is a potential space, or which is known as sub highlight space. Sub highlight space is a potential space between the retina and the vitreous. So, in that space, it is uh, collected. And you can see, uh, if you remember, the blood collection into the anterior chamber is known as hyphema. So, it looks like hyphema also, a posterior hyphema, hyphema lying in the posterior pole. Third important characteristic is that the sub hemorrhage is uh, remains liquefied for a long. It does not get clotted. So, if a blood is there which is moving and not clotting, that means it is in the sub space. Once it comes into the vitreous gel or in the vitreous proper, the reaction in the vitreous takes place and the blood starts either organizing or proliferation occurs. So, three characteristics of sub hemorrhage is that usually it is blunt boat shape. Second, it moves with the position of the eye. And third, it remains in the liquid form or non clotted form for a longer duration. Now this you see is a dispersed vitreous hemorrhage which has dispersed into the vitreous cavity. So now you cannot see easily the blood vessels and the rest of the structures of the retina. Only a small dot here is seen which is the optic disc. So rest of the visualization of the vitreous is not there. That means the uh, Blood has come into the vitreous, cavity, vitreous jelly and it has spread out. So, it does not have a, the vitreous hemorrhage, it does not have a defined border and can range from a few small distinct red blood cells to total obscuration of the posterior pole. Like this, this has got a total obscuration of the posterior pole. So, you, when you see fundus, 
you don't get a normal glow what you see in a normal fungus or if it is long standing the glow starts changing from normal orange towards white so what are the mechanism by which blood comes into the vitreous cavity so first and most important is because of the abnormal vessels so where do we find abnormal vessels in retina in cases of diabetic retinopathy which is associated with neovascularization so there is new formation of vessels which are abnormal and these vessels does not have a structure of a normal vessels these are basically tubes of endothelial cells only which does not have a proper adventitia normal blood vessels has got a internal lumen with uh, wall and a covering so these vessels are very fragile and it can rupture any time so neovascularizations can occur because of diabetic retinopathy because of any vascular occlusions either central retinal occlusion or branch retinal occlusions or in cases of where there is a problem in the blood which is like hypercoagulable state like sickle cell anemia or in cases where there is an inflammation of blood vessels vasculitis one important example is eels disease where there is a recurrent vasculitis of the blood vessels which causes the obliteration of the blood vessels and later on as a result of ischemia when the blood vessel got obliterated that part distal to the vessel obliterated portions it secretes an enzyme or a chemicals which are known as vascular growth factors vgf vascular growth factors and which causes the proliferation of newer vessels development and these new vessel development causes two things one the hemorrhages second that because they keeps on going 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 they form a proliferation and with the movement of the eye they cause traction on the retina so they give rise to either a break in the retina or tractional retinal detachment so here you can see that there is a fan shape picture the the big vessel is coming uh ishita this argon will be the pointer the laser pointer and inferiorly if you are seeing that there is a fan shape structures of vessels which is a may so this is the abnormal proliferation normal retinal vessels are not like this so this is in response to the tissue ischemia when there is a lack of blood supply to certain areas then vegf secretes and vegf acts on the proximal portion of the vessel till where the blood is coming and from there the proliferation of vessel suckers and they it keeps on going either in the plane of the retina over the retina into the vitreous anywhere it can grow and accordingly they can cause problems the most common problem is the vitreous hemorrhage what you see now this is another picture of abnormal proliferations in the Uh, let's say you see that there is a whitish streaks of lining which are the inflamed blood vessels and around the inflamed blood vessel there is collection of blood this is a intra retinal blood because you can see the vessels and other structures so this is not in the vitreous if it is in the vitreous the area will be totally obscured so this is intra retinal collection and in the left hand side you can see that this is a picture of central retinal artery occlusion where there you can see the dilated tortuous vessels on one side one is a ischemic type of picture ischemic type we have already discussed where there is the inflow is also blocked in non ischemic type the inflow is coming but only the drainage is blocked so both do both pictures are there and this is one of the cause of formation of abnormal vessels central retinal artery Uh, central retinal vein occlusion can itself give rise to some amount of vitreous hemorrhage but most important cause after crvo is between 3 to 6 month hemorrhage by the neovascularization not because of the main vessels now this is a picture of npdr non proliferative diabetic retinopathy and another is the proliferative diabetic retinopathy non proliferative diabetic retinopathy means there is 
no neovascularization till now and proliferation means when the neovascularization is started so <coughs> in uh, pdr picture you can see the temporal part again the central is the macula the nasal is the disc and the temporal is that area so in the temporal area there are certain loops which are present which are neovascularization another is the loops which are present on the disc which is known as nvd if you see the disc there is a lace like structure all around the disc so this is nvd and nve nve is neovascularization elsewhere elsewhere means a distance more than two disc diameter away from the disc is nve and within two disc diameter or on the disc is nvd so it has got both nvd and nve both of them both of this picture can remain like this for long or it can bleed any time so those were the abnormal vessels now the blood can come with normal vessels also rupture by the normal vessels most important is the retinal tear when there is a break or tear of the retina the retina phatega to uske upar ki jo vessels hai which is a normal vessels it can break uh, sir 1 2 3 4 there is any confusion or there is addition which you want to add hmm? then sit proper otherwise you come here next time you turn come here so retinal tear is important cause in a normal eye without any other causes of proliferation second is the trauma trauma to the eye can give rise to vitreous hemorrhage because of the bleeding from the retina or bleeding from the ciliary body any of the vascular structure can get can bleed or bleeding from the choroid from anywhere of the structure the blood can come and get collected into the vitreous cavity <coughs> third important cause is posterior vitreous detachment posterior vitreous detachment is an bulk movement of the vitreous jelly from its normal position and during that process sometime it cause causes pool on a certain retinal vessels and from where it causes bleeding this is one of the most important cause of vitreous hemorrhage in a young adult the most of the time the patient comes that there is a sudden floater shower of floaters in the eye the vision may be good 6 9 6 12 also not too much of but the patient comes in the morning wo kale kale machchar ekdam bahut sare se badh gaye dikhna chalu ho gaye so there you may find a vitreous hemorrhage and most common cause in otherwise normal patient is pvd <clears throat> then pvd itself can cause only hemorrhage or it can cause a retinal tear and retinal tear may cause further a detachment so before detachment also the patient may present as a initial sparks like sensation then there are floaters in the eye and then there is a loss of a field this can occur within a period of 5 7 10 days one month that initially there was so whenever you are seeing a patient of floaters two thing you have to be sure about it that these floaters how acute is the floater because most of the many of the people who are sitting here might be having floaters all those who are wearing glasses they might see one or two floaters there so but that is uh, not that serious but if there is a sudden change of floaters लाइक like, अभी तक तो चार पांच ही दिखते थे आज सुबह उठा तो एकदम पचास साठ थे सो इफ एक्यूटनेस ऑफ द फ्लोटर सेकेंड थिंग इज एसोसिएशन विद फ्लैशेज इफ देर इज सेंसेशन ऑफ फ्लैशेज स्पेसिफिकली आज द पेशेंट कि बैठे बैठे ऐसा लगा क्या कि कोई लाइट चमकी पटाखा सा फूटा कोई बिजली सी चमकी इस तरह की सेंसेशन इज फ्लैशेज फ्लैश इज नॉट दैट कि सामने से जो लाइट आ रही है मुझे चुभ रही है दैट इज नॉट फ्लैश समटाइम क्लिनिशियन गेट कन्फ्यूज कि वो सामने से लाइट आती है गाड़ी की लाइट आती है वो आती है तो फ्लैश होता है दैट इज नॉट फ्लैश दैट इज समथिंग डिफरेंट दैट इज ग्लेयर सो फ्लैश मीन्स इफ बिकॉज दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यू हेल्प इन डायग्नोसिस ऑफ अ पेशेंट एट द स्टेज वेन द इनिशियल टीयर इज देयर देन इट इज अ सिंपल प्रोसीजर ऑफ लेजर और क्रायो रेटोपेक्सी एंड द रेटना कैन बी सील्ड बट इफ इट प्रोग्रेसिस टू डिटैचमेंट देन इट बिकम अ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इशू सो any patient telling about increase in floaters 
acuteness of the floaters ask about flashes and second if you can see fundus then see if there is any area which looks abnormally elevated or grayish or what or in symptoms you can also ask the patient that besides this is there is any loss of vision or any diminution of vision one or diminution in any side of it if you are feeling this up idhar ka nahi dikh raha upar ka nahi dikh raha means there is a change in the field of the vision so if you if you can detect it at that stage that means the macula is not involved and the prognosis of treatment is much better as compared when the patient comes to you or you diagnose it when the patient can't see anything that means the macula is already involved so and third is the tresner syndrome it is like uh, blunt compression of the chest like in trauma in accidents in other physical sports when there is a forceful trauma of the chest then there is uh, increased intracranial pressure intracranial pressure intraorbital and pressure which can give rise to bursting of the blood vessels in in the eye which can again give rise to vitreous hemorrhage usually they causes retinal hemorrhages because they does not cause that much of pressure but it can cause uh, this pressure so so these are the causes of normal rupture of a normal vessels or the blood can come from the adjacent source like the macroaneurysm so macroaneurysm means are the secular dilatation of the normal vessels which can bleed so it can occur in diabetic retinopathy it can occur in hypertensive retinopathy or certain congenital disorders like vhl vhl disease and other disorder where there is a racemos angiomas or aneurysms in the eye which can give rise to vitreous hemorrhage another important cause is armd or age related macular degeneration a condition which is now a major cause of blindness after cataract and glaucoma in age group of 50 to 60 above 50 to 60 years of age so the you, many times you may find patient either in ophthalmic or in non ophthalmic clinic also that the patient is 60 70 years of age he says that i have got my operation done 5 10 years back or 5 years back lens implantation is been done and but my vision is getting down so now the cause of this is armd there is central macular degeneration because of age because of other conditions which give rise to progressive diminution of the vision and basically they are of two types 85% patients are dry amd where there is a degeneration but there is no leakage edema or hemorrhage 15% are wet amd in wet amd there is a leakage or bleeding from the this membrane so this if extensive hemorrhage is there or extensive bleeding is there it can also give rise to bleeding into the vitreous cavity so here you can see that there is a central macula the rest of the structure you are able to see the disc you are able to see then there are two blotches of red redness is there so these are basically sub retinal or inter retinal proliferation a jilly ban gayi hai the usually what we tell patient is that because of age there is a jilly formation in your eye and which is now getting ogal rahi hai so it is getting so we have to put some injections to make it dry that is the neovascular membrane which is getting degenerated and for prevention and treatment of degeneration you have to give intravitreal anti vagus injections for this treatment this is for wet eye in the rest of you you are seeing there are mottling of uh, yellowish white spot all over this area these are the drusens and if the redness and edema is not there then these are the 85% of cases where this is a dry condition so you have to control the associated findings associated symptoms like bp sugar hypertension smoking to prevent it from coming into the wet stage the other causes which you should look is any arterial macronism also we have seen then there are other a congenital disorders like coats disease or in young young patients this subgroup is also getting increasing day by day because because of increasing facilities of neonatology increasing facilities of gynae obstetrics 
increasing trend of surrogacy intra ivf there are increasing number of premature births and premature births are liable to or prone to have retinopathy of prematurity so all those kids who are born before 7 years 7 months of gestation or 1500 gram le- weight less than 1500 gram are liable to have retinopathy of prematurity which can give rise to uterus hemorrhage as one of the complications retinal capillary angiomas or vhl disease we have already discussed these are all congenital disorders and usually presents in a young adult patient otherwise who is normal or congen again we are i am hearing some murmuring please keep quiet congenital pallipapillary vascular loops these again is a congenital anomalies or cavernous hemangiomas so these are the conditions which are localized to eye only and does not have any other systemic conditions but still they can have vitreous hemorrhage so when you are seeing a patient of vitreous hemorrhage besides the systemic condition you have to keep in mind these conditions also now how to diagnose vitreous hemorrhage <coughs> so that depends on uh, what age group the patient is there if the patient is like child or infancy the birth trauma like just after uh, a forceps delivery or a difficult birth or in patients of like prone uh, premature patients so the birth trauma can give rise to vitreous hemorrhage or shaken baby syndrome uh, right now not very common in india but in european country this is quite common the father gets a fits of rage and or mother gets a fits of rage but now this fits of rage are coming in india also so you can get or by the time you start practicing you might be having this type of patient also so shaken baby syndrome when a small infant in a shake gusse mein usko patak diya utha ke ya hila diya so he can also have all those hemorrhages or child abuse or congenital axillary retinoschisis this is one of the congenital disorders where the there is a splitting of the retinal layers retinoschisis means splitting of the retinal layers and that can rupture and give rise to vitreous hemorrhage rop we have discussed next age for age bar is the middle age patient right from 15 to 30 45 years of age so eels disease in a young young adult young healthy adult coming with vitreous hemorrhage first diagnosis should be vasculitis or eels disease another is trauma another is pvd we have already discussed old age diabetes hypertension executive armd brvo and pvd so this this is how you should keep your diagnosis and uh, in your uh, this type of questions comes in your mbbs examination also so you can, you have to answer accordingly like what are the different important causes in different age sector age groups so what are the symptoms for the patient so vitreous hemorrhage does not causes any pain the only dim- the thing is causes is the diminution of the vision or if the vitreous hemorrhage is less it may come with the floaters as we have already discussed that there is sudden increase in the pre existing floaters or there is a new floaters floaters or cow webs so you have to uh, know what are floaters and cow webs in terms of you know what is floaters but you have to ask the patient floaters so patient does not know floaters if it is Uh, educated patients then they will confuse you more so don't rely on their symptoms just ask them kya dikh raha hai aapko machhar makhi dikh rahe hain badal ka tukda dikh raha hai jali dikh rahi hai kya dikh raha hai in their own language ask them otherwise your floater is different and their floater is different they google it out and they will tell you anything anything so better is to ask them in the vernacular language what exactly they are feeling that will help you better to come to a diagnosis rather than following their descriptions you know their description is skewed or some shadow in the vision or uh, vision getting some blurring or redness in the vision this occurs when there is a diffuse hemorrhage but not very thick so patient can see but these says that there is certain amount of coloring or color changes there 
some reddish color is seen in the eye visual field defect or scotoma if there is a gross hemorrhage in one of the uh, retinal periphery then the, if intelligent patient is there he will tell that okay i am seeing this area black black is nothing but again if the patient is telling about uh, any sector of the uh, field more common is detachment rather than vitreous hemorrhage because vitreous hemorrhage does not give rise to a field defect that commonly as compared to detachment so if the patient is telling that i am not seeing like this first diagnosis is detachment don't keep it vitreous hemorrhage because the vitreous hemorrhage treatment is treat medically and then we'll see so such patient you can go to the retina and get it screened and treated there don't wait for in such patients if the patient is telling that there i have got a some peripheral or some field defect acute field defect patient will say ki ye to mujhe hamesha bahut dino se dikhta hai mere to kaale pani ki dawai chal rahi hai so that is a different type that when i drive to mere side mein se bahut der tak jab tak koi aage nahi aa jata tab tak mujhe nahi dikhta aur ye to mere ko 10 saal se hai to mere to ye dawai chal rahi hai so that is a different thing and this is ki sab abhi to theek hai ab aap main aapko dekh raha hu theek hai aapki machine nahi dikh rahi that means it is an acute onset defect in the field or photopsia photopsia is like flashes so these are the symptoms which patient make tell which uh, instruct you or uh, warns you that patient may have hemorrhage now what are the signs when you look into the fundus the red reflex may be blurred or totally obscured depending upon the amount of hemorrhage which is present in the eye there may not be any view of the fundus or sometime a red blood cells or some uh, material you can see in the midvitreous cavity or by if you see uh, with the stetlam examination sometime behind the lens you can see some cells moving around it is if it is acute vitreous hemorrhage if it is chronic vitreous hemorrhage then the total glow of the fundus will be changed it will look like a grayish or whitish color <coughs> fundus so which can give rise to uh, which shows you that it is chronic here you have to differentiate between a organized vitreous hemorrhage or a detachment because if it is a long if it is a detachment again the fundus glow will be white so then you have to by history you have to find out in in a chronic vitreous hemorrhage the history will be ki sir छः महीने पहले तीन महीने पहले धीरे धीरे कम हुआ था फिर वो उतना ही दिखता रहा और अब वैसा ही दिख रहा है बट इफ इट इज अक्यूट डिटैचमेंट हिल से पंद्रह दिन पहले तो ठीक दिखता था फिर एक साइड से कम हुआ ऊपर से पर्दा आया नीचे से पर्दा आया और अब पूरा गायब हो गया सो फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री विल टेल यू दैट दीज आर टू थिंग्स आर डिफरेंट लुक वाइज दे मे लुक सिमिलर सो वट आर नाउट द वर्क ऑफ हाउ यू अप्रोच ए पेशेंट ऑफ विटर सैमरेज फर्स्ट इज हिस्ट्री वैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट शुड बी question regarding the history of trauma any surgery previously diabetes any blood disorders like sickle cell leukemia or carotid artery disorders or high myopia these all things in history so the proper history taking is most important time save times and make appropriate diagnosis in i very important thing is history and clinical examination because 90% of diagnosis depends on clinical assessment only we don't depend on too much of Uh, tests because most of the tests are equivocal for us so most important is the history and our clinical diagnosis whatever there now for exam exam uh, examination first is the vision whatever is the vision of the patient then slit lamp examination with and without dilated pupil you have to see either in the anterior chamber or on the iris if there is some neovascularization is there patient is having history of diabetes then there are high chances that there are neovascularization on the retina also and that has caused the vitreous hemorrhage or with indirect ophthalmoscopy you can see whatever the inside findings are there we have already discussed gonioscopy as you know gonioscopy is setlam examination of the angles of the eye it you require a specialized amount of lens to put on the cornea and you, which shows you the angle of the eye and there also you can see any neovascularization and all which will give rise to uh, some indication that there can be what could be the pathology of hemorrhage second is 
IOP or intraocular pressure measurement. Sometimes chronic glaucomas can give rise to neoscularization, can give rise to hemorrhage. So pressure or sometimes chronic hemorrhages can give rise to secondary glaucomas. So intraocular pressure monitoring or intraocular pressure measurement is important. Now the third and the most important diagnosis besides clinical examination is ultrasound. B scan ultrasound graphy for posterior pole to find out what is inside the vitreous. Whether it is only hemorrhage, it is hemorrhage with detachment, it is hemorrhage with some tumor, it is hemorrhage with some foreign body, hemorrhage with anything. So sonography is the seg uh, second most important besides the fundus examination. If rest of the fundus is normal, vitreous hemorrhage is not that great, you can see the fundus, then fluorescein angiography to find out if what, what is the uh, status of the retinal vasculature, what are the uh, abnormal vessels if they are there in such cases. But if acute vitreous hemorrhage, you cannot do angiography because if, vitreous, if you can't see retina, you cannot see angiography. So for a angiography, you need either a mild amount of hemorrhage or a clear vitreous, then only you can see angiography or the another investigation which is these days done is Hello. Another investigation, right, which is very common these days is OCT, ocular coherence tomography. But this again requires a clear media. You cannot do a OCT in a vitreous hemorrhage. So for vitreous hemorrhage, the important diagnosis is clinical findings, sonography. These two are the important investigation which if, if, if suppose examiner asks you okay what are the two examinations or what is the most important examination you will order in a case of vitreous hemorrhage so answer is sonography no angiography no ct no mri no oct anything and the dilated examination of the other eye uninvolved eye is equally important because the pathology which is which has caused hemorrhage in one eye may be present in the other eye also or the pathology condition of the other eye may guide you for the diagnosis in the involved eye. So this is a sonography which is showing uh, how a vitreous hemorrhage scan looks like that. In the central area, whitish area, you are seeing the hyperechoic area which is the collection of the vitreous in the vitreous cavity. Now and there is a circular line. So this is the echo of the retina. Important thing in vitreous hemorrhage is you have to differentiate whether it is only detachment, only hemorrhage or with detachment. So sonography is the best uh, investigation for that. Or it rules out any tumor or mass like in cases of choroidal melanoma. Choroidal melanoma can give rise to vitreous hemorrhage. So if besides the hemorrhage there is any mass is there or not there. Second to rule out detachment and third, whether there is a involved PVD involved in not. With hemorrhage, if the rest of the vitreous is totally mobile, that means the PVD is already occurred. Or if the rest of the vitreous is not mobile, that means there is an incomplete PVD. So sonography is the treatment of choice for a case of vitreous hemorrhage. Now what happens once the blood comes into the vitreous cavity? So what is the normal fate of the vitreous? So if it is mild vitreous hemorrhage, so it gets absorbed with four to six, four to eight weeks, with or without medication, provided that there is no associated pathology. Suppose the patient is diabetic and blood sugars are not controlled, neoscularization there, then the chances of spontaneous resolution are less. But suppose if the rest of the things in diabetic patients also, systemic conditions is all controlled then initial 4-5 weeks you can wait without giving any active intervention for treatment. So 30% of the uh, cases of vitreous hemorrhage get resolved by itself, especially in young patients, especially in patients where do not have any associated comorbidities. Or the vitreous hemorrhage can get organized. So when it get organized because of the gravity, it goes down. So when it goes down, the vision clears. 
तो पेशेंट से सब आपकी दवाई से बहुत अच्छा हो गया पंद्रह दिन बाद मुझे विजन दिखने लगा बट डोंट स्टॉप देयर बिकॉज सी वेदर द विटनेस इज ऑलरेडी क्लियर और द विटर और द हेमरेज इज ऑर्गेनाइज एंड गेट इन टू द सेटल पोजिशन दैट मीन्स एट सिक्स ओ क्लॉक पोजिशन यू नी सी इन द फंडस सुपीरियर में लुक क्लियर बट इनफेयरली यू विल हैव ऑर्गेनाइज हेमरेज तो विटर शुड बी फाइनली फ्री ऑफ हेमरेज बिकॉज इफ यू लीव हेमरेज देयर फाइनली इट इज गोइंग टू क्रिएट प्रॉब्लम ऑफ क्रॉनिक विटर हेमरेज so and second thing we, we can use the gravity force for the treatment part also that if the patient comes with a diminution of vision and gross dispersed vitreous hemorrhage you are seeing give whatever treatment is given and ask the patient to keep as much as possible upright positions when he is sitting when he is moving when he is working it he is in upright position problem comes when he lies down lies down in the night so when he lies down so in the morning the vitreous hemorrhage goes down when he lies down it comes back again so advice is to keep your head propped up simple advice is that ask him what, he sleeps on a bed or takta or khat whatever and on the head end side ask to put two two bricks under the legs of the bed so his bed is slightly 30 degree elevated so even it most of the time the patient sir char takiye laga lu kaise this will not hurt because takiye ke baad wo ghum phir ke niche aa jata hai aur wo straight ho jata hai so keep the this thing have as you see in the ward when you want to give a patient propped up position you just raise the head end but that beds are available in hospital not in home so the other way is just to ask the patient to just keep your head end elevated if fresh vitreous hemorrhage is there 50% of cases it resolves down the patient vision is improved patient problem is vision that is vision goes down if vision improves then he is very happy but don't let him go down until unless full hemorrhage is cleared up now what complication can it occur is the vitreous liquefaction this occurs when there is slight amount of hemorrhage not too much of hemorrhage slight amount of hemorrhage in the vitreous gel then there is a degenerative process that takes place into the vitreous and causes liquefaction of the vitreous what is liquefaction the density of the vitreous or the jelly like structure goes down and it becomes liquefied so it can cause a liquefaction <coughs> on sometimes the cellular debris it cellular debris it migrates entirely and gets deposited in the angle and other structures and when it can give rise to glaucoma which is known as ghost cell glaucoma because when you see nothing is there the angles looks open but if you see gonioscopically you can see that the hemoglobinized cells lying in the angle mostly in fairly again because of gravity that it gets there and blocks the trabecular meshwork which give rise to this so this is known as ghost like glaucoma or khaki cells uh, glaucoma usually it is present in in uh, patient who are operated and that too without any lens because after cataract surgery there is a direct communication between anterior and posterior chamber if the lens is there iol is put there then there is a physical barrier but if it is aphakia that means nothing is there so things can come forward backward so in cases of aphakia this is more that's why these days the incidence has gone down because aphakics are less these are all cataract surgery means by default i will there if if you uh, if a patient is there where cataract surgery is done and iol is not put that means it is some complicated surgery otherwise by default cataract surgery means cataract removal and iol insertion <coughs> and second is the proliferation in the vitreous so vitreous is by default is an uh, cell a cellular structure transparent a cellular a vascular structure made by nature to keep it clear so that the light can travel and that is why there is no blood supply in the vitreous the it gets its all nutrition by diffusion from the choroid and surrounding structure but once the barrier is broken down then there is proliferation and it can give rise to proliferation over the surface of retina or into the vitreous 
which is retinitis uh, proliferans or proliferation into the vitreous which finally any proliferation or any scar uh, in the body first it is formed and then it got retracts you get a wound first the wound size is bigger after some time the wound size gets smaller it gets smaller because after healing there is remodeling of the wound and remodeling of the wound means it tries to minimize the defect so similar happens in the eye also whenever proliferation is there then it tries to minimize and in uh, process of minimizing it just pulls up the vitreous uh, uh, the retina so it causes the tertiary retinal detachment so this these are the two complications which can occur after chronic vitreous hemorrhage now how ideally vitreous hemorrhage is treated so a mild hemorrhage is treated by first treatment of the cause second medically you can add vitamin c it helps in the early resolution and some liquefaction of the blood and resolution of the blood second proper the positions topical anti anti inflammatory drugs and keep a wait for 2 to 3 weeks if it get resolves then again look for the pathology sometime is there that because first on first visit you don't see you see only vitreous hemorrhage but after the vitreous hemorrhage clears up you see that there is a break on any side which has caught the break so now the treatment is continue the same treatment for vitreous hemorrhage and treat that break or the hole or the tear which is there because otherwise it will go into the detachment the treatment for break is any laser or cryotherapy for sealing that break or if it is detachment then it will be the treatment of detachment but if the vitreous hemorrhage is not resolved old time the school was to wait for 3 months and then do for any intervention but these days we don't wait for 3 months 4 to 5 weeks are enough if it is resolving otherwise the treatment for vitreous hemorrhage is surgery that is vitrectomy pars plana vitrectomy we go through pars plana with vitreous cutters and then clean out the vitreous uh, jelly as well as hemorrhage see for any proliferations endo laser or uh, endo cautery the proliferations the detachment is there so associated pathologies can be treated with this but if it is only vitreous hemorrhage so the important is vitrectomy plus Uh, lasers because most of the time the treatment uh, the cause is neovascularization and neovascularization is because of ischemia so clearing of the media plus treatment of ischemia treatment of ischemia is just lasering the part which is causing the secretion of anti vegas because of ischemia so how this is this brings us to the principle of how laser works in such conditions laser is just it's it's a sort of a uh, hitler treatment you heard about hitler no hitler ko nahi jante hai to aap logo ko thoda punishment kam hi milta hai isko so how many of how many of you people have heard about rudolf hitler nobody वर्ल्ड वॉर वर्ल्ड वॉर के बाद ही जानोगे नाजी वर्ल्ड वॉर टू हिटलर नो बड़ी हो जाती सो हिटलर वॉज समबड़ी अब जाग रही ही वॉज ऑफ द ओपिनियन दैट द आर्यन रेस इज द ओनली रेस विच नीड्स टू बी हेयर ऑन द अर्थ रेस्ट ऑफ दीज ऑल रेसेज आर एंड स्पेशली ज्यूज Jews are the worthless people. They should not be there. They are here and they are competing for our resources, our everything. So he causes mass destruction or mass killing of all the Jews. Okay, concentration camps and all, and lakhs and lakhs of Jews were put into it. And look at that. Who, like today, Modi is. Who Modi is another Hitler. So. तो उसके दिमाग में कभी आ गया कि ये इतने बेकार हैं तो सबको पहुंचा देगा वो अच्छा जय श्री राम बोलोगे तो द थिंग इज कि द द फिलोसफी ऑफ दैट ट्रीटमेंट वाज 
that since we cannot increase our resources since we cannot our resources are limited so we just cut down the users so whatever users we want to give them we'll give them rest of the users we just remove it the same way your retina it has got limited resources of blood and oxygen because of various pathology so blood which is coming to the retina is suppose 1 liter is required in 1 hour it is coming only half liter so this half liter we want to give it only to the macula because that is involved in the central vision so rest of the structure periphery of the is just like juice so we just laser them and make them dead so they don't ask for food so when they don't ask for food they don't do all this dharna pradeshan and these all dharna pradeshans are vegefs these are vascular endothelial growth factors which causes all the complications so all these dharna protection are controlled we put a dhara 144 or curfew so that they don't come out so dhara 144 or curfew is the anti anti vegef injections which we put it has a temporary effects so till the dhara is there people are inside once the curfew is left people come outside the so same way anti vegef injection works till its duration is there the vegef is controlled it goes down and laser is just like gunning down all the things to na rahega bas na bajegi basri to just kill the all the peripheral areas so that the vegef demand is decrease and all the pathology which is causing because of vegef the neovascularization the tractions the hemorrhages it is got control so this is how a patient of petrosemrage should be managed